knowledge, this self-awareness. Peter has come to the place accepting his limitations. But he's confident that he's been used by God. I'm going to point out four things from this passage tonight. The first is this, that we see Peter in verse 12. He emphasized the necessity of repetition. He emphasized the necessity of repetition. Look again. He says, therefore. Well, we can stop right there. Remember. Therefore, the Bible is there for you to go back and look at what came before it. Therefore, okay? In other words, he's saying, remember these things because of the divine power of God at work in your lives, because you've been saved, and because you want to be effective, faithful, confident Christians. Those have those qualities and nurture those qualities we talked about uh, uh, last Sunday that we see there in uh, verse 5, 6, 7 in there, you know, faith and virtue and knowledge and self-control and all of those things. He's saying, because these things are at work in your life and you have your part to grow and develop them and, and to see them grow in your life is you're walking in the power of the Lord because we don't want to be ineffective or, or unfruitful. We want to be fruitful Christians. We want to be effective Christians. We want our lives to count. We want to run the whole race. In our Sunday school class this morning in Philippians 3, we talked about Paul wanting to run the whole race. A reminder, in one sense, to those of us who uh, have seen, have much more of our life in the rearview mirror than we have out there in front of us. That God has us here because He wants us to keep on running. Now, we won't be able to run as fast as we once could. In high school, I ran a mile, I ran a half mile. Not all that well, but well enough. Uh, you know, and, and I could get a mile in a, under five minutes. I could get a mile done. Now, sometimes on a cold, cold day up north in Palmyra, I'm not sure I can drive a mile that amount of time when the car is not working or something like that. And, and icy roads. I, you know, five minute mile is, you know, fond of memory way back. But I still need to run the race. I still need to finish the course. It's a tragedy in life when Christians lose sight at the end that God has something for them. Many of you can remember those saints, and some of you may well be there already or will be one of these days. And you remember those senior saints that kind of, they had been on this earth a long time. And, and, and sometimes they were, you know, I can't do what I once did. But they were there every Sunday in Sunday school. And they are every, they're in the pew, every, you know, worshiping and all of that. And uh, Ed of Virginia, I can't think of <coughs> Nelson, Ed of Virginia Nelson. Uh, and remember Palmyra. Anna was one of those ladies who's just an amazing woman. And God loved her. She got to a place where she lost her eyesight. But I'd see her sitting second, third row back and see her singing with us. And sometimes we sing some of the newer daddy hymns like I did some of that this morning. Some of that stuff she didn't know, but this one that she knew, she'd just sing along with us. And, and it was funny that what seemed to be a child song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And you see her singing that with her whole heart. Because when you're coming near the end of life, you begin to realize how amazing that really is, the faith of a child. Ed Virginia was a woman who ended up having to go to the rest home. So what did she do? Well, at first she did it, then she got to where she could. She started a Sunday school class at the rest home. Had 15, 20 people there once a week. It wasn't on Sunday mornings, but it was there. And, and, and she, at one time, she was holding court and she was teaching a little bit. She had somebody read her the lesson and then she'd talk about it and had to kind of remember it. I had a grandmother, I had a grandmother who did the very same thing. The substitute taught, the substitute taught in her Sunday school class when she was 90, probably he was 93 or so. And her brother would read her the Sunday school lesson and she'd read, talk back to him because she couldn't read anymore to the point where she got that lesson in her head and would teach. She had somebody read the scripture passage and she'd teach the Bible. 
And we see those things. God wants us to run the whole race. That's, and I, I wonder more than I meant to on that part, but it's just amazing. Because God has given us, He wants us to run the whole race. And what Peter reminds us here in this verse 12, he says, I kept saying the same things to you over and over again. Through the years, I repeated myself. I want to remind you of these qualities, God's nature, God's work in us, those virtues that we talk about. And he says, I'm reminding you of those things. You know them. I know you know them. You've heard them before. You can tell them to me, but I'm going to keep reminding you of these things because Peter understood that we need that sense of reputation. We need to keep going back to the basics. And repetition is a great learning tool, isn't it? Anybody who balances a checkbook does so on the basis that one plus one equals two. Because if that didn't work, you're not going to get the checkbook balance. I remember basic training. How it was that we had a moment where they were teaching us things, and then one thing was how to read a map and use a compass. And it's that compass, that basic little instrument that when at Fort Winter Wood they're going to drop us off by groups of fives and sixes at nighttime and said, you've got to go this far and you can't even see the map necessarily, but they're telling you to go this far away. You need to keep checking that compass because if you don't, what's going to happen? You get lost. You like to go in circles. That's part of what Peter's done is here. These bases, remembering of who God is and, and what He's done in our lives, remembering the basic fundamentals of the Scripture, remembering those things. And Peter says, I kept telling you those things over and over and over again. Because if you don't keep going back there and I've reminded you of those things that you already knew, did that because it's that important. You know, many of the heresies and cults had a group of people uh, yesterday afternoon while I was on the front porch working on uh, the sermon, tonight's sermon. I had a group of people come up. It's a familiar group. Uh, the world at large would call them uh, part of Christianity. The truth is they're not. They're part of a cult. Uh, it, not one of these wild, crazy things. But they're established and thought of highly in many circles, but they're not Christians. But most of the cults and sects like that that have started have gotten there not because they said, I'm going to create something brand new, but because they've gone to Scripture and they've found sometimes isolated passages of Scripture. They zero in on something that's kind of an obscure text that is not clearly, as clearly, you know, the mystery of the gospel. And it kind of ignored the basics and wandered off into weird places to where eventually they say, well, you know, after all, John said, you know, we don't see him now, but we'll, we'll see him, not John, but when Paul wrote, you know, one day we'll see him and we'll be as he is. So people say, that's right, one day we're going to heaven, we're going to be gods ourselves. And they get a verse, an isolated verse, and pull it out and get excited about something. The next thing you know, a whole religion is built because they put the compass in their pocket and says, this is a novel new interpretation. This sounds pretty cool. I'm going to go off and run down this path. Get that compass out. And that's why you'll hear people and pastors, and you may have been this and that, you may have been there done that. That's why... Um, I repeated myself several times in the night sermon, haven't I? Said the same thing over and over again. Well, if I'm going to stand in the footprints of Simon Peter, I'm not going to complain too much about that. We've got to remember and keep going back to those places. We've got to go back to the things that are solid, rock solid, irrefutable, undeniable truths of God's Word. And that's what Peter said. There's something important about repetition. We have Awanas here. And I was working with Awanas at Highland somewhat for a while there this last, this last year. And, uh, you know, with all of our children, we teach them God's Word. How? Give them the same, the verses, over and over and over again. That's how we learn. The truth.
truths of God's word. It's always important for us to keep reminding ourselves of the basic. And as I look back, I realized in my ministry the years, and again, I'm one of those guys that can look back over three different full-time churches and a couple of other places I've pastored or been a lay person, taught, or things like that. And I realized the things that made the most difference, that God used me to make the most difference in those places were not programs and ministries or buildings, but it was the lives that God let me touch. And every now and then I hear from some of the people in my past, and what's what stirs my heart and helps me know that I know that God used me to say something to them is when sometimes I get a question and they're, they're, they're telling me, and this is what I'm thinking about this, and I realize that they're kind of telling me what I tried to teach all those years. And they're repeating back to me about an approach to how we approach Scripture and, and how we live our lives and things like that. And you begin to realize that repetition is so important. The second thing we see in this passage 